Hi, this is Ted Beener with the National Weather Service in Seattle. I'm going to take a look at the latest winter weather outlook. First, let's take a peek at the Thanksgiving holiday weekend forecast. Right now, it looks like we're going to have a series of cool Pacific storms move through the re region during the weekend. For those heading east of the Cascades, let's take a close look at the mountain snow levels. Your best getaway day is going to be Wednesday, when our snow levels are highest, somewhere between 2,500 and 3,500 feet. Snow levels will be dropping Wednesday night into Thursday below all the passes, and over the weekend, they're going to tend to vary somewhere around the pass levels as systems move through. Stay tuned to the forecast and get a feel for when your best time might be to head back west of the Cascades. For the rest of western Washington, it would just simply be wet at times with seasonal temperatures. Highs right around 50 degrees and lows in the mid-30s to the mid-40s. Now for the outlook for the rest of this winter season, brought to you by the National Weather Service's Climate Prediction Center. Let's take a look at what is El Nino versus La Nina. El Nino is when sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific tropical waters are warmer than average. And in contrast, La Nina is when those same tropical waters are cooler than average. For more information on this phenomenon, you're welcome to look at this article on El Nino in a nutshell. Now a graphical look at what is El Nino versus La Nina. In the lower left-hand corner under ocean temperature departures, you see a lot of oranges and reds right along the equator west of Peru. That is a classic El Nino, and this one is from the late 20th century. Just to the right of it is a classic look for La Nina, where sea surface temperatures are these blues that you see right in here, cooler than average, from an event in the late 1980s. Now you may be asking, what does this have to do with our weather here in North America during the winter season? Well, it has everything to do with where the position of the jet stream tends to be. During El Nino in the upper right-hand corner, the jet stream tends to be right across the southern tier of the U.S. and here in the Pacific Northwest, we tend to be warmer than average. That's exactly where we were last winter and the winter before when we had El Nino in play. In the lower right, for La Nina, the jet stream is quite strong coming out of, the, out of Asia and sends a lot of momentum and storms our latitude. Sometimes it'll buckle, go up into Alaska, the Yukon, grab cold air and bring it south. So the, here in the Pacific Northwest during typical La Nina events, we tend to be cooler and wetter than average. And in between are what are called neutral conditions when those tropical Pacific, eastern Pacific tropical waters are near seasonal temperatures. Now historical trends. Everything in the red across the top are El Ninos going back to 1950. And you can see last winter was one of the top three warmest winters on record going back to 1950. And in the blues are the La Nina events. Our last significant one was back in the winter of 07 and 08. And while we're here, we also have definitions of what is weak, moderate, and strong for both El Nino and La Nina. Well, here's a pie chart that shows how often these uh, phenomena occur. Roughly one-third El Nino, one-third neutral, and one-third La Nina. And you'll notice at the top there, the strong El Nino, that's what we had last winter. They occur less than 10% of the time. Now, what's interesting here that carries forward for this particular winter season is that if you add up neutral and weak La Nina, it's close to half of the pie that you see here. So where are we at this particular moment? On the left-hand side, NOAA put in a fleet of buoys in the tropical waters of the Pacific from off the coast of Peru to the Western Pacific. And climatologists have studied geographical areas depicted here as Nino 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they have found the hybrid Nino 3.4 has the strongest correlation to winter weather here in North America. On the right-hand side, you see sea surface temperature anomalies, and we're focusing on Nino 3.4. Going back to last winter, you can see how warm we were at this particular point, cooled off during the spring, leveled off somewhere in the middle of the summer, and we've been either on the cool side of neutral or on the mild side of weak La Nina uh, here in just the last few months. So where are we at the moment? Well, currently, we have weak La Nina conditions across the eastern Pacific tropical waters. Run an animation here that kind of shows that blue area that you see there since about the latter half of the, of, of the summer. 
Sea surface temperature has been hovering right around minus 0.5 degrees Celsius the last few months, and we currently are looking at neutral or weak La Nina conditions expected this winter. Bottom line is the jet stream is going to tend to spend more time at our latitude, bringing us more Pacific storms. Let's look at the trend through this summer. This goes back to June, and the chart on the left is showing what forecasts of sea surface temperatures in those eastern Pacific tropical waters are going to look like. And across the bottom you see the months, oh, I'm just going to use an example of the OND, that stands for October, November, December. The next one is November, December, January. You get the idea. And at this point in June, there was a three out of four chance of La Nina coming for this winter season. But if I run through these for July, and then August, and then September, you'll notice that all those lines tended to rise a little bit. They moderated. And so here's a close look at what El Nino versus neutral versus La Nina is. And you can see about half the lines are either in the neutral or in the La Nina category for the winter months. What does this mean for our significant weather that we get here in the Pacific Northwest? Now you're looking at our past trends, looking at how these all relate to El Nino, La Nina, and uh, neutral conditions. This is not a forecast, just kind of gives you a feel for how frequently we tend to get these kinds of significant events during the winter season. So for major floods, neutral is number one with La Nina close second. For the big windstorms, La Nina is number one with neutral a close second. And for lowland snow events here in western Washington, La Nina is by far number one, neutral is second, and in all three cases, El Nino ranks last. Now, that doesn't mean these events don't occur, and last winter was an example of that, but they tend to occur less frequently. So what's the outlook for this winter season? This was updated here this past week. On temperature, here in the month of December, uh, increased odds on above average temperatures during the month of December. And on precipitation on the right-hand side, you see a lot of white there. EC is the letters that stands for equal chances. Imagine 100 poker chips. 33 of them in the above average, 33 near average, and 33 below average. In other words, no real trend during the month of December is expected here. For the heart of the winter season, January through March, this 90-day period, now we've taken some of those poker chips and put them into the below average temperature category, increasing the odds on cooler than average temperatures through this 90-day period. And on the right-hand side for precipitation, taking a few of those poker chips and put them in the above average condition. This is a typical La Nina look where we tend to be cooler and wetter than average. So in summary, a La Nina advisory is in place for temperatures, looking at increased odds on warmer than average temperatures for the month of December, and then tipping the odds towards cooler than average for January, February, and March collectively. For precipitation, just slightly increased odds on wetter than average conditions as we head into the new year. And for the mountain snowpack, it's likely to be near or maybe even a bit above average by the time we reach the peak of the mountain snowpack, which is usually right around April 1st. On the event scale, increased odds on flooding and windstorms, but no guarantees. A better chance for lowland snow than the last two winters here in western Washington. And if any of these occur, the best bet for flooding and windstorms is through the month of December, and then the best chance for cold and snow is usually right around the Christmas holidays and through the month of January. Now just to kind of give you a feel why we need to prepare for this particular kind of neutral slash weak La Nina phenomenon, here are some recent memorable events in the last 20 years. You may remember Snowmageddon, December 08, where it started snowing right around December 13th and kept going on again, off again, all the way through the end of the year before a warm, wet rain event occurred early in January, resulting in widespread flooding, some landslides. That picture in the lower right is where is, is of Howard Hansen Dam that got damaged during that particular event. 20 years ago, just after Christmas, many places in the Puget Sound area got over two feet of snow. And then shortly thereafter came another warm, heavy rain event, lots of, of uh, urban and small stream flooding, main stem river flooding, and a lot of landslides, such as this one here uh, in the Magnolia area of West Seattle. So your takeaways here. In a neutral, weak La Nina phase, we tend to have some active hazardous weather 
in our past fall and winter seasons. There's no guarantees for this winter season yet, but we really want you to be weather aware and weather prepared in advance. Some really good information that you can use for your home, your car, school, work, even your pets. Go to takewinterbystorm.org and garner all of that information there so you can prepare for these kinds of weather events in advance. And of course, stay tuned and monitor conditions as we go through this winter season. Here are some resources that you can use as we go through this winter season. Number one, the National Weather Service website at weather.gov forward slash Seattle. A lot of helpful information there for you. In addition from that, you'll find links for the National Weather Service social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For your smartphone, there's an application. It's a web app called mobile.weather.gov. Go ahead and bookmark that. It mimics the National Weather Service webpage. Of course, we have our No Weather Radio Network. Uh, across the state of Washington, there's 22 stations serving over 96% of the state's population. And it's a key element of the emergency alert system, giving you an all-hazards warning system. In addition, we have some phone numbers that you're welcome to use. And if you have any questions, you can reach us anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On behalf of all of us at the National Weather Service, thank you for listening. Have a safe winter season.